All right. Well, welcome to our presentation on translation memory. I'm Stacy Brown Summers uh, from MindLink Resources, and um, I'm hoping um, to just go through some information with you today about an important topic. And I think a lot of people are uh, sometimes um, we throw a lot of information out at linguists and it's easy to get lost. So what we want to do in these webinars is, is talk through them and give you some good information and answer any questions that you might have. So as I'm talking, um, if you do have questions, you can go ahead and put them in the group chat. If you are watching this uh, after the fact, then you are welcome to send us an email or put a comment on the video below um, since this will be posted on YouTube and we will love to we would love to address those. Um, but what I want to do today is talk about translation memory, um, which is uh, let's see if I can do a full. I don't know if word changes so much is hard. But anyway, I'm just going to talk about um, some real basics about what memory is and how you can use it. Um, you can see here I have our friend Dory to help us go through this information. And any of you who have uh, kids can um, relate to Dory. Oh, looks like I have some folks trying to get on. Let me help them, and we'll be in good shape. Okay, cool. All right, cool. So yes, Dory has a problem. She has no short-term memory, or she has short-term memory loss. And so, you know, I thought of her with memory because, you know, a lot of times we have so much going on. We rely on our brains to do a good job, and you know, you just, we live in a world you just can't rely on that um, because there are so many distractions and stress and things in your life swimming around, just like Dory. You can't count on quality when you just rely on your mind. And I think there's there's this kind of sense after you get out of school, because in school you, you are taught to um, retain information and take tests where you have no resources, no ability to look anything up. You're just supposed to have it in your own mind and be able to provide that content. And I think that's a great skill to have when you're in school, but it just doesn't reflect in real life because if you aren't using the resources that you have available to you um, and you're just relying on your mind, there's a lot of things you can miss and you just can't really count on that quality. So that's why we have what we call translation memory. So I'm gonna talk about that today. Um, as you can see, our brains have so much swimming around, you can't count on quality when you are trying to just depend on your own mind when providing translation, editing, QA, or almost any linguistic task. As well as you know your language, um, you know, there's always nuances and terminology and things that you'll need help on. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So we're, by understanding what translation memory is and how it works, linguists can use it effectively to provide better outcomes for their clients. So um, the first thing to talk about is what is translation memory? And I think people oftentimes confuse translation memory with machine translation. Now, machine translation is what we call um, things like Google Translate. So if I were to go and put this um, sentence into Google Translate, I'm going to do it now just for fun. Now, you know, and understand Google Translate does have its merits um, as a resource, but it is a resource. It is not uh, the end-all be-all for providing this. So if I were to take this sentence and uh, put it into Google Translate, and we'll take it into um, Italian. So in English it says, our brains have so much swimming around, you can't count on quality. So this does kind of say um, our brain has a swimming pool a lot around. You can't count su on 
Qualita. It, they just put the on in there. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a little bit, you get the gist of what it's trying to say, but it definitely says it in a strange way that is not um, conducive to understanding, true understanding. So that is Google Translate. Um, and what I'm gonna do here is change. I'm just gonna fix my screen sharing here. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, so that I'm sharing my entire screen so you can really follow what I'm doing. Okay, so here's uh, Google Translate um, where I translated it into Italian from Google and it messed up the formatting and the capitals are all kind of weird and um, there's like there's words on here for for Nendo for providing um, you know it just it doesn't read well. So that's machine translation, but on the on the other side, you do get the gist of it. Okay, so the difference is, um, oh, let me. Okay, the difference is with translation memory, you take another tool, a computer computer aided, and I'm going to pull one up called WordFast, which isn't always the one we use at MindLink, but it is one we do use quite frequently. Um, just to give you the gist. Now, there are a lot of computer-aided translation tools out there. Um, WordFast is just one of them. Um, and so you can kind of see here, I think WordFast has a nice way to show you um, how uh, translation memory works, right? So if I had a project, I'm just gonna pull up an old project that I've done before. Uh, okay, here it is, it's in Swedish. And you can see, um, you know, there's translation that this, this has already been translated, right? But what happened is um, the person who translated it, um, some had help. And while they were translating, and that's where you see these scores here, 100% um, means this string matches exactly what is in the translation memory. The translation memory is set up here and sometimes um, a client might provide a translation memory, right? And what we do is we connect the memory to the text and then this provides a score. So if you see 95, it means 95% um, of the string matches what was said in the translation memory. So probably in this case, there's a couple of words here that don't, and it's nice for QA too, because you can kind of say, well, why is it 95% and be able to um, check that out. Um, you know, here is another example, it's 75%, probably because that's still in English. So the translation memory gives you a score that you can, that you can go back and reflect on and, and work with. And so again, you know, the translation memory is connected to this project and as you're, as you're typing in, and unfortunately I don't know Swedish, so I would show you if I did. Um, as you're typing in, it, they'll actually come up and recommend words that are gonna help you, um, help you do that. So I don't know if that helps explain what translation memory is versus machine. Machine is more of, um, again, just having a computer do the translation for you. And translation memory is essentially, um, a computer aiding you in providing translation. Does that make sense? So um, we already popped in and looked at WordFast um, for translation memory. And the question of when should you use translation memory, if you're translating any document, I highly recommend it. And I've seen people, especially newer translators, that will just pull up Word and look at the source and just try to type out what they see in Word. And I really strongly discourage that approach because you're gonna have a lot of quality issues and you have nothing that's gonna help you. The cool thing about memory is if I um, translate this word action settings and you know, say this is an extremely long document or you know, here's, here's a, an example, workflow settings. And here it comes up again. The cool thing with when you use machine translation, you really only have to translate this one time. 
instead of having to go through every time it comes up and translate it again. And a lot of times when you have to do that, like if you were just translating into Word with Word only, you run into a, a scenario where you could forget when you're like 10 pages in what you said before and have some inconsistencies in the document and you know it it doesn't um, create the most efficient effective method so watch for those kind of things that's a big value that you get in translation memory by using it effectively so i would say always use translation memory <laughs> as much as you can and how do you use it um, you have to use what they call a computer-aided translation tool, which is word, what I'm showing you with WordFast. The cool thing with WordFast is it's free. So if you are a new translator and don't want to invest in a bunch of tools, um, this is a great one to just get started using. Um, my team is probably wondering why I'm promoting WordFast, but that is the reason. It's because it's free and a new translator can get in and kind of get the concepts with working. Now, it's not totally free because it has a limit on how many words um, that you can do. But if you do start getting that volume of translation, then you, you can up, upgrade to a different tool. And one of the most common ones you'll see is Trados. Um, and Trados is a, is a very robust tool um, for providing translation. Um, at MindLink, we use one called WordBee. And I will give you a look at that, how the, oh, cancel word, cancel this. <clears throat> Let's see here. Wordbetranslator.com. Okay. So, and some of you who have worked with us before have also used Wordbee. Um, now, what we do in Wordbee is we actually come here to uh, resources and you'll see translation memory. Um, and this is actually, you can see how many I have in here. Um, and so when you have a translation memory, we put it in here um, for the specific language. And then whenever somebody is working on a project using that language, they can pull up that memory and, um, you know, rely on that to improve the quality. So um, we, we have just this whole system and database of memory that we use, you know, whenever is needed. So <clears throat> then um, let me show you on a job. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to show an old job that we've done. Actually, maybe I'll show you a new job that we just are putting out there. Okay. Um, okay, so if I have a job here, Okay, sorry. This should look familiar since we already looked at uh, WordFast. So it's in that bilingual form. You have the source, the English on your left, and you'll have the translation text on your right. And so as soon as I hit this, um, you know, if there are similar words in the memory, it will show up here. Um, since this is a new document we're doing, I don't see anything over here showing up. But you just kind of keep an eye over here and you should see little phrases as one and once you've done about you know five or ten strings um, it'll remember the words that you typed before and recommend them throughout the document so um, you know it, it's it's something very handy it's something that is very valuable um, for clients because a lot of clients will build a memory and um, insist on the linguist using that memory. And so you have to really pay attention there. So that's an example of another um, tool. Okay. So, um, hey, it's me again. <laughs> so um, basically with the translation memory, um, you know, you find it in any computer-aided translation tool that um, is out there. And the reason it's important for all translators to um, know about this is because a lot of companies and a lot of agencies will actually use it to set pricing with the translators. Um, I, the thinking is um, that, uh, you know, the translators 
and some of this is because you know the the agencies kind of caught up with or not the agencies the clients caught up with what the agencies were doing so you know about the late 90s um, a few agencies discovered this concept of translation memory and what they were doing is working with clients and saying oh you need this document updated every year and so they were having the clients pay them every year but then what they were doing is having their um, linguists only do the update only do the updates so they didn't even do you know half of it so basically they were double triple charging their clients for <laughs> kind of a, a nice gig if you can get it but now most clients know about translation memory and um, what the re it's resulted in is agencies providing actual discounts for what they call fuzzy matches and some of you may have heard this term fuzzy matches and it's kind of a funny word but if you remember in word fast I showed you um, you know where there was like a 95% or a 75% score that's what they're talking about with the fuzzy match so anything less than a hundred so what what some companies have done is the closer the match the more the job is discounted so if it's a hundred percent match um, it's a lot of agencies or companies say we're not gonna pay for a hundred percent match we already have those words in there but we will pay um, a discounted rate for you know, 75% matches or 50% matches. And of course, no match is where you can charge the full translation rate if you're doing a, a quote by word. And so um, offering discounts for fuzzy matches is a nice way to, um, you know, show good faith with your agency or your client. Um, but the reality is, or if you're accepting a job and the client has given you fuzzy matches, but then you're not, or has insisted on you providing discounts for fuzzy matches, but then you're not using the translation memory as a tool when you're doing the translation. Basically, you're getting kind of ripped off because you're providing it as a no word trans or a no match translation, which would be the full rate um, when they're only paying you for, you know, a discounted rate for that fuzzy match. So that's another reason it's really important to understand translation memory when you're accepting a job because if they are giving you a job with, um, you know, and insisting on discounts for fuzzy matches, and, and it's reasonable to ask for that. Um, but one, the first thing you say is, okay, well, you have to provide me, you know, with the memory and, um, and make sure you're using a tool that will show you where those fuzzy matches happen or where, you know, the match is less than 100 or, actually more if the match is more than you know whatever the the fuzzy match is set at and you have to use one of those tools so that you can take advantage of that and then truly um you know be putting the effort in where they are paying you to put the effort in um, if that makes any sense so fuzzy matches is is a good discussion and if you have questions about that go ahead and post it below um, on the youtube um, so the cool thing is once you really have a tool set up, um, you can you can create your own memory. So if, like if you're a Spanish translator, you start doing a lot of jobs and what you can do is organize your memories based on the content type. So you do a lot of like technical um, uh, translations, plus you do uh, some books, um, you know, fiction books. And so you could set up two different uh, memories. And the cool thing is you can actually use those memories on different documents for different clients. So this is where you, the trick is because sometimes the client will dictate how to use the memory and what's going on there. But once they give you the job and you have your tool set up, you put it in your tool and you can benefit from memory. Like if you have a one client with one document and a different client, but it's kind of in the same um, subject matter or the subject areas, you can actually um, leverage those memories on the from the first client on the second client it's okay it's a little bit cheating but it's not cheating like nobody's gonna grade you nobody's looking over your shoulder this is just a way to make you more efficient and you know that's where you can be really successful as a translator because you're working really efficiently you're able to output more words make deadlines um, and ultimately uh, that is what um, 
you know, is going to bring you more business because you're doing excellent um, performance. And so, you know, this goes back to what I talk about all the time, which is defining those specialties that you want to provide because by picking areas or subject areas that you are an expert in one it's going to help your marketing right because you'll become known for those areas and two it's going to allow you to build up content that you can reuse um, for different clients so for example if um, you have a lot of experience in the healthcare industry and you know I, I come across translators that used to be doctors or nurses or all kinds of professionals many times in their in their native and home country and they come to the US and this is so needed right now and so to market yourself as a medical translator not just interpreter but a translator with you know and then you set up terminology for example um, drug names or um, you know certain procedures um, you'd be able to you know kick out so many documents because you're able to leverage those memories and include them but you have to use a computer aided translation tool in order to do that so so that's what I wanted to show you guys today I promised I was going to keep this under 30 minutes because I know we're all busy and hungry it's lunchtime um, is there are does anybody have any questions they want to talk about here in the group chat um, you are welcome to enter a message here um, and like I said before I'm going to be posting this out on YouTube so if you have questions and you've watched this online feel free to um, post them below um, but yeah and so while you're thinking of potential questions let me go through a couple of announcements um, for MindLink um, first <clears throat> I guess I should um, show my face hey we got new um, bookshelves but there's no books in them yet so bear with <laughs> but um, a couple announcements going on with MindLink. one we're making some changes if you're already set up in our system be prepared for some information about um, how we're going to be um, getting you in our system and the HR and you know some some really um, logistical things so stay tuned for that because we're in this process right now as a whole company and we're evaluating every process we have and we're trying to ask ourselves is this the best most efficient way we can do this and I hear what people have been telling me you know they want to be paid faster they want to know what's going on and so we're trying to make that really clear for people so stay tuned for some information please um, pay attention when you get emails from me if you're not getting them let me know because maybe I'm going into your spam so you might want to make sure that um, that you have added um, Stacy at mylinkresources.com as a contact in your system okay so that's one two um, we are still doing our incubator group and we've we had a first meeting it was awesome um, I'm looking we're looking to add to our incubator team if you are serious and I'm looking for people that are really serious about building their business as a translator a linguist interpreter or whatever that is and not just kind of looking for clients but really building a, a, a business and a name for yourself join our incubator because this is going to be a group where we're going to learn from each other and benefit from each other and so we need definitely we're looking for more people to be active in that so um, you can go to our website and there's some information about that and also just keep an eye on our website we have events coming up um, this summer hopefully we'll have another gathering um, and all good things so thanks so much for being part of MindLink if you are part of MindLink if you're not part of MindLink we want you we need you um, please go to our website and apply today and if you don't see a job posted for your language um, you can join our talent pool and we'll be happy to talk to you because um, you just never know when something's going to come up so thanks again have a lovely rest of your day enjoy your lunch and I'll see you in a month take care <laughs>